Today News Update. It's the weekend and time for your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, July 22. So glad you could join us. An early morning blaze at Harlington St. Philip destroyed a house owned by Delmore Harrison. Harrison said the two-barrel wooden structure belonged to her mother who perished three weeks ago and this made losing the house especially hard. A distraught Harrison told Barbados Today, family, neighbors, church friends and the office of St. Philip MPK McConney have reached out to provide assistance. Tourism operators have sweetened their staycation deal for residents for the long weekend that coincides with the climax of the Crop Over Festival in about a week's time. They are offering a special package starting next Friday, July 29, that gives Barbadians the option of booking at least two nights at a local accommodation and getting the third night free. Chairman of the BHTA, Rene Coppin, outlines some of the properties involved. Adulo Apartments, Dover Beach, Golden Sands, Naniki Barbados, Ross Trevor Hotel, Atlantis Historic Inn, Little Good Harbor, Pirates Inn, Infinity on the Beach, Butterfly Beach Hotel, Savannah Beach Club Hotel and Spa, Ocean 15 Apartment Hotel, Round Rock Apartments on Sea, and Southern Palms Beach Club. Chairman of the Intimate Hotels of Barbados, Mahmoud Patel, suggested the special offer should be extended for the remaining summer period to give more locals the opportunity to explore what the island has to offer. I would, I would suggest and we are, IHB are going to extend it past the crop over weekend. We could probably try to even maybe do it longer than, than uh, maybe all of August as well. Um, you know, one day free, two days, you pay for two days, one day free, and then there will be additional programs that we will offer in terms of what we call vacation and stay, and weekend packages and so on. But I also want to say that this is just a start. I think we also need to include uh, what Rene would have mentioned, experiential tourism. A lot of Barbados don't know the experiences of what people call tourist attractions. We need to call these local attractions as well. Right? So the Harrison's Cave, the Cocoa Hill, the Peg Farm, and there's a list of them, a lot, um, that we should build into um, our staycation packages as well. Local tourism is becoming a big, big plank post-COVID. People are recognizing the importance of the home dollar, and I think the initiative by the Prime Minister, BTMI, Ministry of Tourism, BHTA, and IHB, to start a concentrated narrative to develop this sector of our industry, which is circular, it's local, and it's sustainable, mm -hmm. is more than welcome. The tourism officials insisted that the program is not in response to the lower than expected summer bookings. Tourism Minister Lisa Cummins made clear it's a unique Barbados tourism product. Barbados has always had staycations. We have always had staycations, especially in the summer months. The hotels have always put this on, and this has always been a long-standing partnership with the hotel industry and locals and Barbadians as an investment in the industry. And I want to make sure that we understand that our industry must continue to welcome locals because that is the mainstay on which our industry is based. As the island heads into the last lap of crop over events, head of the Barbados Association of Masqueraders, Anthony Lane, is appealing to corporate entities to step in and provide sponsorship to bands participating in the festival. And they make a call, they make a call then to corporate Barbados to get involved, you know, to, to uh, assist, to sponsor um, the bands and come on board, you know, because again, this is not now about just the bands, it's about Barbados. It's about putting on a spectacle. And when the plane come here in the droves that has happened back in 2019 and 2018 and 2017, all, all aspects of the business in Barbados gain from it. All the, the, the restaurants, all gain from it. So, so that's where we want to get back to. And, and that's the call. The call was made really to corporate Barbados you know, to come over and get involved, however you can, however, whatever assistance that we can have from you, it will be appreciated. The big names in the Student Revolving Loan Fund and Sunshine Snacks People Choice Competition are in. The names were revealed by the National Cultural Foundation's marketing officer, Ashley Dial. The top 20 are Bashment Park by The Plug, Ben by Kira, Stage by Ashana, 
Freedom at Last by Da Silva and Chrissy D. Don't Kill My Vibe by Thelia. Tip and Benova by Zach the Champ. Dibbiness by Real Lane and Walks. Tease by Freshy. All by Yannick Cooper. Red Gal Anthem by Doyen. Amazing by Renan. Judge Me by Quan. Same One by Shaquille and Coupadan. Low Budget by Cerule. Crop Over Becoming by Archie Miller. Location by Grateful Co. Extraordinary by Mr. VJ. Hand Pan Head by Swaggy. PTSD by Aknatan. And Moby by Bruce Lee Almighty. These top 20 artists will be performing at the Courtesy Garage 98.1 Soka Ruction. Regional and international news coming up after this short break. Cure Oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over 1 billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge. From strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. To regional news in Guyana, eight APNU and AFC parliamentarians were officially suspended from the National Assembly after the House adopted recommendations of the Parliamentary Committee of Privileges. The opposition MPs were suspended for four consecutive sittings of the National Assembly after they engaged in disorderly and disrespectful behavior. But opposition parliamentarian Kemraz Ramjatan sought to get Speaker of the National Assembly, Manzur Nadir, not to move ahead with the motion. But the House Speaker stood his ground. In all of this, throughout all the jurisdiction, it comes down to, in the end also, the discretion of the Speaker. And I'm happy to say in this case, my dis discretion is founded in constitution, in convention, and in commonwealth practices. And so while I've listened to the honorable member, Mr. Ramjitan, I now would have to disagree with him and ask that we proceed with the matter before us. Sir, are you going to... I, I find it is a distinction without a difference, absolutely. And uh, this, once a matter, and I am a lawyer of some experience, even if I am not wise, it is important to understand that once it is filed, it engages the court and it becomes very much active and alive. So it is not as if the precedent set, and even in this, House, the precedents were set in relation to other matters in which you cannot. A charge is brought before the court and the matter comes before the court and then becomes active. On the international front, the United Nations expects a deal to resume Ukrainian grain exports through the Black Sea to be fully operational in a few weeks and restore shipments to pre-war levels of 5 million tonnes a month. After two months of talks, a breakthrough has finally come in Istanbul. Russia and Ukraine have agreed to allow for the export of grain from three key Ukrainian ports for four months, crucial to easing the international food crisis. Today, there is a beacon on the Black Sea, a beacon of hope, a beacon of possibility, a beacon of relief in a world that needs it more than ever. I want to recognize and thank all those who helped make it happen. Following the invasion of Ukraine, Russia has been accused of blockading the country's ports on the Black Sea, trapping tens of millions of tons of grain in silos. Moscow has denied responsibility, blaming Western sanctions for slowing its own food and fertilizer exports, and Ukraine for mining the approaches to its ports. These factors have caused global food prices to skyrocket, but Friday's deal allows for the safe passage of overseas exports. The overall objective is to avert famine in the world's poorest nations. NATO member Turkey, which has been acting as a mediator in the conflict, praised the agreement. 
We are proud of being instrumental in an initiative that will play a major role in solving the global food crisis. We will contribute to the prevention of hunger that awaits billions of people all over the world, from Africa to the Middle East, from America to Asia. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastudy.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. Sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on its mini bus terminals as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend and be sure to join us again on Monday.